All right, so we're on the hunt for a meteor this hour, the ball of fire that uh, that screeched to earth uh, a few days ago and is believed to be uh, somewhere uh, southeast of Middlemarch and west of Outram near Dunedin. And so school kids have been excited about this, taking part in it. Uh, uh, the, but the most excited people of all, of course, are geologists uh, who are you know, uh, hoping to find this piece of rock, which could actually weigh as much as 30 kilos. Uh, they said they'd be lucky to, but you never know. And uh, and one of the one of those in the search party this afternoon is Thomas Stevenson from Fireballs Aotearoa. He's on the line right now, actually. Hey, Thomas, thanks for talking with us. It's everyone at home. Yeah, uh, 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 your first words were clipped, but it uh, sounds like you're with us, which is great, Thomas. How did you get on uh, in, in the last couple of hours, and where were you looking? Uh, well, we actually didn't go out today after all. I wanted to go out with a drone and do a bit of aerial surveying, but the weather just isn't good enough, unfortunately. Is it a bit cloudy? Um, it's a bit windy, and there have been hints of rain, which are never good for an electronic drone. No, of course. So there's been some there's been some foot searches, and you think you've got a pretty good idea of where it came down, don't you? That's right. So uh, we did a big hunt last Friday, mostly with people from the geology department at the University of Otago here in Dunedin. Uh, we didn't find anything on that trip, but we now have an expanded search area. So what's going to happen is we'll go back to that area this weekend. We're inviting uh, school students from around Otago to take part, um, as well as people from uh, the Otago Museum, uh, the university, um, some fellow researchers from Canterbury. Um, and it's a, um, it's a go big or go home kind of deal. So this next hunt, uh, we'll get as many people as we possibly can onto the site. If we don't find anything um, and we, we don't see anything on the drone survey, uh, because that will be attempted again, um, then we're just going to say that's enough. We won't go back again, at least not with such a big group. But I guess there's always the chance that someone could just randomly stumble upon this. There is always that chance, but that being said, um, we are looking for an object that ranges between 1 and 30 kilograms. That's what our colleagues overseas have predicted. Um, an object weighing even one kilogram should make a crater about one metre across, according to our calculations. Uh, something going up to 30 kilograms, of course, would make a very big dent. Uh, we haven't seen any craters yet. Um, I think somebody looking for this object would find a crater first. Um, so it's, it's possible, but at this point it's not looking very likely that they would just uh, stumble upon it in isolation. Mm, Although there right. could be small fragments that were chipped off the main meteorite that have uh, scattered about a little. Mm. If someone thinks that they're that they've found something interesting, interesting, should they not try to handle it? Um, we there are certain protocols that most meteorite hunters follow. So, for example, mm. we're not supposed to um, contaminate the meteorite with anything organic. So that means if you're going to handle it, ideally wear some gloves. To be honest, we're not too worried about that with this meteorite because it's thought to have landed um, in a sheep paddock or, or a cow paddock. Um, so it will have been contaminated by something already. Um, but still, it would be good to handle it with gloves on. Mm. Yes, uh, probably covered in sheep <laughs> now, which is not good. Um, <laughs> you know, aren't we lucky that this didn't hit a populated area? Because if it is really large, it could do some damage. That's right. Um, I'm not really sure how much damage it would have done, but yes, I'm, I'm sure glad it didn't hit my house. Um, it's really landed in the best possible location for us. Um, we just got some fireball cameras set up around Otago, and they were working, you know, at the perfect time to spot this meteor coming down through the Earth's atmosphere, and it landed um, just a few kilometres, basically, west of Dunedin. Um, mm. It's the perfect place, really, and perfect timing. I know. And, you know, you were saying to me that if, if it is as large as 30 kilos, then it would be, what, the second largest to fall in this country ever. That's right. 
Um, yeah, second largest meteorite ever recovered in New Zealand. Uh, that being said, it would be the tenth meteorite ever recovered in New Zealand. We haven't found that many in this country yet. Mm. I wonder. I wonder why that is. Do you think? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, one of them is just the kind of terrain we have here in New Zealand. Um, there's a lot of rugged, mountainous terrain. There's a lot of bush. Um, if the meteorite falls in those areas, it's going to be very difficult, maybe even impossible to recover um, if, if we even see it. We don't have nice flat deserts like they have in South Australia and Antarctica, which is where a lot of meteorite mm. hunters go. Uh, right, in the States as well? These objects are easy to spot. Mm. Uh, in the States, yes, mostly in the southern states. Yeah, it would be good meteor hunting uh, terrain. It's a, it's a really interesting job you've got. Uh, you're, you're, a, you're a master's student and working with the geologists. Uh, what do you, how much information would a, a rock like this give scientists? Like, How valuable is it if you find it? Well, um, for this particular meteorite, we can't say at this stage because we're not sure what type of meteorite it is. But in general, meteorites tell us a lot about... Um, the development of the solar system and what it was like back in its early days um, before the modern planets finished forming. Um, so, for example, a lot of scientists think that uh, liquid water and the organic compounds essential for life were, were brought to Earth by meteorites. So by studying these, we're actually trying to find out things like where did we really come from and um, where, where does life itself fit into the history of the solar system and the whole universe. Mm, big questions. Yes, very big questions. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so I really hope that that someone uh, or you indeed have some luck with this because uh, it would just be uh, it would be well, it'd be fascinating, and to see and to see the actual <laughs> size too because you're only you're only guessing at the moment, aren't you? From from the camera shots. Yes, that's right. Um, we have run a few calculations. Um, we're pretty confident in what we have, but yeah, as you say, we won't know for sure until we find this thing. But we think there is a good chance that the meteorite is out there. It's just sitting around waiting for someone to collect. And uh, mm. yeah, we're going to put in the effort this weekend and uh, give it the best shot we can to find it. It sounds like you're not going to have any trouble finding people to, uh, to help out. Like a lot of school children are really interested in this. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, even last week, um, before it was really blowing up on the news, we had uh, school kids from all over the South Island, essentially, wanting to get involved, and even um, a class in Stewart Island who wanted to come up. So oh, they it's still really, going to come? Uh, really getting people excited. Sorry? Yeah, it's been... Are they all going to come, the Stewart Islanders? Uh, I'm not sure that's been confirmed yet. Uh, yeah, we're still yeah, sort of organising everyone. Wonderful. I mean, that that's fantastic. It's a great um, school um, science project, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's something that you can actually live and be a part of, like, uh, and tangibly, like, yeah, f feel that excitement um, of this. I mean, aren't you glad? I suppose that you have this, you have this, these wonderful cameras set up now. So, so if an, there's another one, uh, you, you're going to capture them. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that is one of the aims of our camera network, really. Um, the main point of it was to uh, get students and young people involved actually doing astronomy for themselves. And that's why most of our cameras are set up around schools in Otago. Gee, you know, I'm just thinking about this, you know, where, where you think that this, this meteor might have landed is not that far from the rail trail, is it? Wouldn't it be terrible if it wiped out a couple of cyclists on the trail? <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it fell at 10.50 at night, so I would hope there wouldn't be anyone cycling at that hour. No, no. Uh, there could be some mad person who's decided to do the whole 150 k's in one day. I know that's been done before, but no, well, that's the thing. It, it, it was the right time. Do, by and large, uh, do the, well, can a meteor come down at any time? Anywhere? Uh, yes, any time and any place. Um, right. We can't image all of them because our fireball cameras, um, they're very low light cameras, they only work at night. Um, 
But yeah, meteors definitely do come down during the day. For example, there was a significant fireball back on July 7th. Uh, I believe it passed over Cook Strait and made a bright green fireball during the day. Um, right. So it's rare to see those, but they do happen. Well, this one was um, pretty stunning, wasn't it? And a lot of people saw it from, from you know, from Omaru to Invercargill, Queenstown to Dunedin. Uh, I wished I'd seen it. I, I really do. And I suppose that's perhaps why there's so much interest and everyone's, it's, it's sparked everyone's imagination. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I've got pictures in front of me of this fireball and the images are just incredible. It's, I, I didn't imagine we'd see anything this big or this bright. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's like something out of a movie, really. I mean, it, it looks it looks like Star Wars or something, like a lightsaber from the heavens, you know. And, ha- I mean, remind us again, how fast are these things going? Oh, well, um, meteorites, when they first enter the Earth's atmosphere, they're travelling at a few tens of kilometres per second. So, unimaginably fast. Um, this meteorite took six seconds to travel through the atmosphere. For the first five seconds, it was glowing, so that was its fireball phase, and that's uh, when we detected it on the cameras. And in fact, I've got an image from one of our cameras in Dunedin here. The fireball was so bright that this camera didn't register it as a meteor. It thought it was looking at the moon. No way. That's the sort of magnitude of what we're dealing with. Unreal. And this one could be super old. I mean, are we talking back to the birth of the sun kind of old. Yes, um, so that would be about 4.6 billion years old. Um, some meteorites are younger than that, but mostly they are about the 4 billion year range. Um, back in the early days of the solar system when the planets were still forming, there were a lot of asteroids just whizzing around, crashing into each other, fragmenting and producing um, a lot of uh, meteorites. Unreal, isn't it? When you start when you start looking into this kind of thing, it, it just is it's hard to comprehend, isn't it? And it's just just mind blowing, you know. Yes, it's fun to imagine, though, what oh, it was like sure. in those early days. Mm, absolutely, I can see why you'd love your job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's um, it's yeah, it's a dream come true, really, for an Earth scientist um, to get the opportunity to explore bodies out in space and uh, mm. sort of investigate mm. other planets and where they came from. Yes. Oh, no. Well, well, all the best. And I tell you what, I'm going to remind people a wee bit because I'm just looking at a story and it says <clears throat> that, that this this would have a distinct black surface, uh, this meteor, if anyone finds it. What, 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 could it. what could it look like? You know, jagged or smooth or, or what? Uh, it, it generally would have a smooth surface, um, uh, black or very dark red, as you said. Um, it would be smooth. It could have um, a few little wavy lines on it. Um, the reason it has that crust is because the outer surface of the meteor melts as it comes through the atmosphere. Um, it melts at the same time that it's glowing. Um, but by the time it reaches the ground, that molten outer layer um, most of it has been shed off and there's only one or two millimetres left behind of that layer. And it um, refreezes right before it hits the ground. But as it's refreezing, it's sort of flowing around the meteor, if that makes sense. So you sometimes see little flow lines. Oh, okay, yeah. And like you say, most likely there'll be a crater before you find the rock. Yes, that's right. We'd expect a crater at least one metre across and probably some jets of soil that have been thrown out in every direction, making a sort of star shape. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So if, if someone's here and they've got their cell phone, should they photograph, you know, like if they find it, it'd probably be a good idea to take a picture and then note the location. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we encourage people to take photos that show some kind of a scale. So it's unlikely that you'd have a ruler on you if you're searching this place, but maybe a a ballpoint pen or a coin or something like that. Just put it next to the object when you take the photos so we can see exactly how big it is. Um, And then, yeah, note the location. Um, Let let us know at the University of Otago or go to www.fireballs.nz. There's a place there where you can report your finding. Oh, that's great. And that goes for anything in the future as well, I suppose. 
Yes, and also if you uh, see a, a really big fireball, you can also report that at the fireball's website. Yeah, so we can keep a check on things. So, okay, well, that, that's excellent. And, and, and like you mentioned, don't... Okay, say you think you've got it. Don't touch it if you can help it. Uh, and I see there's a tip that perhaps use... I mean, I suppose a lot of people don't have fresh aluminium foil, but if you're out looking for it, take some foil with you, wrap it in that. Don't touch it if you can. Try and wear gloves. Otherwise, you pop it in a, in a clean plastic bag and then, and then you need to get it to, to the university and to the, to the experts. Yes, that's about right. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Well, I will await with interest and see what, you know, what, what, uh, what you uncover. When do you... So did you say you're back again not till the weekend on a, on a specific hunt? Yes, well, we've got two big trips planned. One will be on Friday and one will be right. on Saturday. So the Saturday one is reserved for school students. The Friday one is for... Um, mostly older people, to look around uh, the more rugged terrain. Mm. Okay, good one. Yeah, just in and case we'll it's sort of we'll also be doing perched. a drone survey as well. A what, sorry? A drone sorry, survey. I, I was just saying we're also going to do a drone survey. Mm, mm, which could be very useful. And yes. nothing like getting uh, a bit of height and looking down. Be. Yeah, exactly. That's the best way to spot a crater. Mm. Oh, well, it's been really interesting, uh, Thomas Stevenson. Thank you so much for chatting with us. And uh, I'm wishing you loads of luck uh, in the next, uh, you know, couple of days towards the weekend. And let's let's see what you turn up. Yeah, no worries. I'll let you know if we find anything. You, you better. <laughs> I'll put you on straight away. <laughs> You'll be going, Eureka, we've found it. No, it's wonderful. And um, mm. it's it's just a fascinating subject, I think, and tells us so much about our our planet and that you know yeah all those all those things that are happening on above us all the time amazing and thank you very much and have yourself a good afternoon hey you too thanks very much for having me